Good to see each one of you. Listen to what the gospel writer writes, the book of Luke in chapter number two. Mary has just found out that she is going to give birth to a baby boy, and this is the ending part of what the angel says to her. He says this, uh, listen as you stand with me, but he says, this is what the angel says, for nothing is impossible with God. Another translation says it this way, no word from God will ever fail. Father, this morning we come into your presence, we come into your house because you've invited us to come in. And Lord, we just say thank you. Simply thank you this morning. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, Lord, that nothing is impossible. No matter what mountain might lie ahead of us or we might be facing, no matter what is happening, Father, nothing is impossible because we know your words don't and can't fail. And so, Father, this morning, help us to worship you. Help us to worship you from the very depth of who we are, worshiping the very heart of who you are. Lord, we'll thank you. We'll praise you. We give you glory and honor. And we do it all in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Let's worship him together. Hallelujah. have a table set up in the back.
text later, but Father, just to be able to be here in your presence. You said where two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst. So we don't have to invite you to come, but Father, we open our hearts to you and say, Lord, would you do something real in my heart today? In the hearts of everyone who's gathered in person, those joining us online, Father, help us to just really adore who you are. Would you move in our service this morning? Would you do what only you can do in these moments? Father, we don't want it to be about us. We want it to be all about you. So, Father, we open our hearts, we open our minds, and say, come, Jesus. Come and do a new thing this morning. Hallelujah. You step down from heaven, humbly you came, God of all creation. Here with us in a starlit manger, Emmanuel, light of the world, here to save. Angels sing, praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening. At your feet we fall. Angels sing, praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth, here with us, joy awakening. At your feet we fall. Sing it again. Angels sing. Angels sing. Praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth here with us. Joy awakening. At your feet we fall. One more time. Angels sing. Angels sing. Praises ring to the newborn King. Peace on earth here with us, joy awakening at your feet we your throne all the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all for from you are all things and to you are all 
things you deserve the glory Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. from you are all things and to you are all things you deserve the glory and I exalt thee Cause you're worthy of it all For from you are all things And to you are all things You deserve the glory Lord, we just bask in your presence this morning, God We thank you, God, cause you are worthy You are worthy, God Above everything else above everyone else, above every situation and circumstance, above every victory and above every defeat. God, you are worthy. You are worthy, God. You are worthy. Forgive us when we have put our attention and our time, our adoration somewhere else. Today, God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're alive. We thank you that you're still working. We thank you that you're still moving. We thank you that you're still pouring your spirit out. We thank you, God, that we don't worship a, a, a Lord that was just born in a manger and then died, but one that resurrected again three days later. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He 
we worship you this morning. And now as we transition into your word, Father, would you just continue to move? Holy Spirit, would you continue to move in this place today? Our amen at the conclusion of our worship is not the end of our worship. Because worship is everything that we do. So, Father, help us to continue to worship you as we transition into your word. Bless the boys and the girls as they get ready to be dismissed and go back to their classes. Would you just do a mighty work in their hearts and in their minds and in their lives, Father, as you continue to build a firm foundation in their lives. Father, we'll give you thanks, we'll give you praise, we'll give you glory, and we'll give you honor. And we do it all in the mighty name of Jesus, and everyone said, Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. He's worthy. Hallelujah. 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 version is is best for you. But we are continuing in our sermon series uh, for this month called The Heart of Christmas. And this year we are taking a look at the true meaning, peeling back some of the layers that we have turned Christmas into so that we can get to the heart of what it's really all about. And I know for some of us that might be easy to say, well, it's about Jesus. Well, it is about Jesus, yes. But we want to dive a little deeper even than that to really get uh, into that. And so I'm, I'm excited. Last week we... we talked about hope. Hope is at the heart of Christmas. And we see the faithfulness of God from his prophetic word about Jesus' future coming. We read that in Isaiah chapter. Cut it down ourselves, which is, you know, the more people you have there, the better. Sometimes. And um, so we get up in the morning, we eat our breakfast, we head out to the tree farm, and we cut down just the right one, strap it to the back of the van or the inside the van or the roof of the van. It just depends on how big the tree is, on where it gets put. Bring it home, put it in the base, and then we head downstairs and we grab the box of ornaments, the box of lights, and all of those things, maybe you have similar uh, process. Through all of this, for the most part, we let the kids decorate the Christmas tree, although this year we're starting to see a shift, and they're not quite as interested as... of heavenly angels to a group of shepherds who were out in the field watching their flocks and keeping them safe. Luke chapter number 2, and I'm going to begin reading in verse number 8. Luke chapter number 2, beginning in verse... Number eight, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and they were terrified. Say terrified. terrified. But the angel.
angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town. most well-liked or most well-known people. They were considered stinky, dirty, and untrustworthy. They lived on their own for months as they traveled with their flocks. If you think about it, here's the fulfillment some 700 and almost 50 years later. The fulfillment of what God had spoken some time ago. God told the people long ago that he would rescue them, and here was the fulfillment. The angels told them where to go and find the baby, and before they left for their search, in a cell and there's an opportunity to get out on a Christmas Eve and attend a service. Even if you don't go to church, you're probably going to sign up to go. And there were cookies. I think that was the surprise though. I didn't tell them there were cookies, but it was an opportunity. And so they would come in and we'd have Christmas carols playing. And there would be in a gymnasium that was probably about the size of the sanctuary. No no platform or anything like that. No chairs. They all had to sit on the floor. And it was lined with prison guards. And the men sat over here and the women sat over here with a very wide aisle in between as well as another couple of guards. And we just greeted them and we said hello. And then we began to do some Christmas songs, very similar to what we did in our, in our service the, to start the service this morning. And, and you know, during that time, there was a lot of talking, and you could see a few people, they were really engaged, tears would start. to well up in their eyes and stream down their face and then there were some who were goofing around and elbowing each other flicking each other in the head and you know it's all part of it and that's okay and then after that would be over they'd all sit down and I'd begin to preach about the Christmas story just take a a small aspect just a small portion of it and I'd begin to preach and no matter how disruptive and unruly they may have been during worship there was always this moment where a peace came I'm the outcast. I'm the one that no one loves. I'm the one in the family that's been written off. 
I'm the one that no one ta- wants to talk to anymore because I made some decisions. And they were bad decisions. And she went on just to... pour out her heart for the next seven, eight, nine, ten minutes. I don't know. It felt like a half hour. It probably wasn't. No one bothered her. No one interrupted her. But she just... As the word of God came out in the prison services, as the word was preached, I didn't have to use the words hope, peace, joy, and love, but they were there. They're not going to come out most of the time and ask you why you're different or why you can keep your head held high. Most of the time, they're not going to ask you what it is that makes you different, but they're longing to find out what it is. What it is that makes you different than everybody else. When God wanted to announce the arrival of his son. He didn't do it in the presence of an earthly king or queen. He announced it to the poor and the forgotten. If God's favor was off. to the shepherds in the Christmas story, then surely God's favor and peace is available to us as well. It's one of the world's greatest needs is peace. From the time sin entered the world and affected all of creation, we have been at odds with God, we, humanity. Bible says that we are enemies of God and in rebellion.
against him, his rule, and his reign. And sin didn't just... shed on the cross. Once you were alienated from God and you were enemies in your minds because of your evil evil behavior, but now He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death and and presents about his death. Conflict. We don't need less conflict, we need more Jesus. Some of us spend so much time praying away the conflict, we, for ask, we forget to ask the Lord for more of Him. Last week we were practicing, and uh, before church we do that every Sunday, and, and there was a song, and, and I just wasn't feeling it, and then I was getting frustrated, and then I was just getting more frustrated. And so after we stopped the song, uh, Chad started just playing something that came to his head. It was Holy Spirit inspired, but in the moment...
I even took it one step further and said, God, they don't deserve it. And I just remember the peace of God that filled that moment. I don't remember where I was. filled that moment and I didn't hear God's audible voice like you hear mine but I just felt inside many of you know what I'm talking about and I just felt like the Holy Spirit whispered neither did you deserve to be forgiven neither did you I have no bitterness, anger in my heart today, but can I just confess to you, can I just say something? And and this is, this might sound crazy, so just stick with me for a moment. They, They were the ones in the wrong. Like, like legitimately, they... They were the ones at fault. But I couldn't experience the peace of God. I couldn't be relieved from my dis-ease. Until I was willing to forgive. Not wait for them. to the lowly people, to the people that everyone else pointed the finger at and said, ooh, get away, you stink, you're not worthy, you're an outcast, you this, you that. The same thing that some of you, those kind of things were spoken into you over the years, whether you were a child or you were a teenager or you were a young adult, whoever you were and whatever was said to you, but some of those similar kinds of things were spoken into you. And I want you to know today, that's not who God sees. That's not who you are in his eyes. And quite honestly, his eyes are the only eyes that matter. And the people that you know that maybe others in the workplace have labeled them or whatever, you know, have have, have kind of projected those same things too. You're the one back. And finally, the last point today is peace is our purpose. What the world needs more of is people who have peace of God in their hearts and who are willing to share that peace with others. It's not optional 
for you and I to have peace. It's not optional for you and I to show that peace. It's an expectation that Jesus has for his followers. In fact, Jesus speaks of this in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount. Turn with me quickly to Matthew chapter number 5, first book in the New Testament, Matthew chapter number 5, page 786. If you're using a Bible from the chair, Matthew chapter number 5, just one verse. Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons, excuse me, of God. We, you and I are called... To carry God's peace, but also live out God's peace. The angels told the shepherds that peace was available to those on whom God's favor rests. Jesus said something similar. Hear and listen. When we are willing to seek reconciliation with others and fight for harmony rather than sowing dissension, we are identified with the heart of God who long. Many of you who are maybe are my age. the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ have experienced his hope, his peace, his joy, and his love. It's our prayer, my wife and I, that this Christmas you and I will be people who embrace that gift that's been offered to each one of us through his birth, life, death, and resurrection. That you and I might live in right relationship with God, with ourselves, and with with others and then taking it one step further and living as beacons living as people who will show
that hope, peace, joy, and love that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because God's not called you and I to keep it all bottled up. God's not called you and I to just keep it to ourselves. But he tells us... This morning, we're so grateful for who you are. We're so grateful. And not only can he, but I believe he desires to. And so there's two things very quickly that I just want to pray into specifically. Some of you this morning are standing here saying, I'm, I, I'm like one of the shepherds. No one cares. Blasting, never ending, never changing love. And so this morning, let the truth of God's word penetrate your mind, your heart, your thoughts. Because you are not who others have labeled you, you are who God calls you. And I want you to receive that this morning. I want you to receive that. That you are loved and you are highly favored. That you are important. And you have purpose. Jesus.
The other thing I just want to mention very quickly, we talked about this morning is this idea of unforgiveness. If that's you and you know the Lord is speaking to your heart, would you just begin to call out to Him? Ask Him to forgive you if you need to be forgiven. Ask Him to help you to forgive others. not an absence of conflict, it's a presence of a Savior. If you're here this morning and you need to ask God to forgive you, you can simply just ask Him plainly, like a conversation. Like if you're asking a human being or talking to me or someone. Father, we thank you and praise you for who you are and for what you do. We, we, we can't fully comprehend the love that you have.
for your creation that you would send your one and only son to this earth to be born and to live a sinless life and then ultimately die on Calvary's cross for the forgiveness of sin for the world, for all eternity. heart for your second coming. Spending time maybe with friends and family or doing all the things that happen during this season. Lord, would you help us to remember the heart of Christmas, the heart of why we celebrate and what we're celebrating. That there's a God in heaven that offers hope and peace and joy. joy and love, and his name's Jesus. Would you help us to cling to that? But would you also help us to reflect that? To reflect that hope and joy and peace and love. That we wouldn't just hoard it for ourselves, but Father, we would... We really hope you'll be there, but if you would just do us a quick favor and sign up on your way out so that we can make sure we have enough of uh, everything prepared.